So this is streamer Shelby, who um, also known as Shuffle, who was dating Minecrafter Wilbur Sue. Always liked mm -hmm. telling my different experiences that I've had um, in dating because it feels important to me to share what I've learned and maybe help other people to not make the same mistakes that I have before. I'm 30. I've dated a lot. I've gone on a lot of Holy dates. 30? I keep trying. Um, and it's unfortunate that a lot of my dating history, uh, oh, there damn. were a lot of bad people that tried to manipulate or control me. Um, but that's not to say that every person that I've dated has treated me poorly. Um, some people just weren't the right people. Um, and speaking out about my bad experiences has never felt as important as it does right now because silence has always brought me peace and this time it feels like my silence is not keeping my peace. It's only keeping somebody else's peace. Um, and I never thought that I could be the kind of person to end up in a situation like I did. I never thought that could happen to me. And so for me, this is important because it could help anybody else see the signs sooner than I did, um, or hopefully avoid a similar situation entirely. Because the whew, the truth is, it was dangerous. Um, there were a lot of things wrong in this relationship that um, I endured some pretty terrible treatment, um, and I might touch on some things here and there about that, but. Um, if I feel like it's important to the overall context, but what I want to stay focused on is this specific issue, um, and the things that happened matter of factly and the things that people saw and witnessed in our circle. Um, it took me 10 months after to heal and I spoke with multiple therapists and tried different forms of therapy. Um, I tried. Um, why do we care? <clears throat> Bro, how, you, do, you know the rule. You know the rule, buddy, okay? You are not allowed to be an annoying chatter and not even be subbed. You've been around for three months. You're gonna act like a dick bag in my chat. Pay up, buddy. I remembered the TTS this time, SM head. Them's the rules. I will only accept emotional harassment if you sub. Tried somatic therapy. That one was actually really good for me. <laughs> um because that one actually helped me release a lot of um, built up anger I was having over the last year. Um, but the anger that I was feeling was for myself because um, I felt like I should have known better. I felt so stupid at myself for um, sort of just staying through all of this. Um, and I shared my story with a lot of friends after I started talking to therapists and I was like, so this thing happened and I, I wasn't really sure it just seems weird now to me looking back and all of them told me exactly what was happening in the words that I was too afraid to use. Um, okay, so I think I wanted to show at least a little bit of it to show you guys why she decided because this is always a question that comes up anytime any woman wants to speak out about something. Um, she... Resubbing just just in case I emotionally harass. <laughs> oh, thank you for the eight months. Um, she just wants to talk about her situation dealing with abuse to help other people see the warning signs sooner. She doesn't want to see other people suffering in their relationships because no one else is willing to like sit down and tell them, no, you are being abused. She also didn't mention him by name. She didn't mention Wilbur by name. She just said, this is what I've experienced in my previous relationships. That was it. That's all she said. Wilbur, and, and 
here are some some of the clips that talk more in depth about what she actually was dealing with. So hard. I didn't like it. And I tried telling him over and needed him to really stop biting so hard. I didn't like it. And I tried telling him over and over again because he wasn't actually trying at all to not hurt me. Um, but he said he would try at first. And then he started saying things like, it was my pain tolerance that was too low, or I'm exaggerating how much it actually hurts. He's not even biting that hard. I'm, I'm being dramatic. Um, but his biting escalated to a point where I was covered in bruises all over my arms and they hurt and he would poke at them for fun. And he even felt so comfortable showing off my bruises that he had caused to our friends because he would bite me so hard by accident. By accident, he would even joke that it looked like he abused me. I needed him to really stop biting so hard. Ah, oh, funny joke, funny joke, ha 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 ha. And then here is, I, I believe, Nikki talking about the fact that this dude was also biting her. I mean, he called her. And like, yeah. He just bites everyone. He'd bite you. He never bit me, my man. He would. We'll be said bite. No, that's not Nikki. Sorry, that's someone else. Rana. Sorry. Sorry. My apologies. <clears throat> he would even joke that it looked like he abused me. Um, and eventually he did acknowledge how bad it looked that I was covered in bruises all the time. So he stopped um, biting my arms as often and he started biting my legs instead. Look, now I can't. And then this is a clip, I guess, from like an IRL TikTok or something. I'm not sure. Oh. So I broke up with him and I didn't even want to um, because I couldn't even see for such a long time after. Um, what it really was that had happened, that he had abused me. And in fact, we left things as we want to be friends and he can never imagine nev not speaking to me again. Um, and then he never spoke to me again. All the, all the cleaning, all the laundry, all of it, I was paying for all of the um, like paper towels, uh, like soap, all of that only stayed in the house so long as I was buying it. Um, I would arrive and there would just not be toilet paper in the whole house. There were paper towels instead. And who knows for how long too. Fuck my life. You know that guy doesn't wipe his ass because there is not a single person that is wiping their ass with paper towels. That shit is going to get raw so fast. You know that he's the type of guy that got them shit stained boxers. Because, like, you are, like, I understand that not everyone wants to deal with getting a bidet. But, dude, can we get a fuck, can we please? Toilet paper, at least. <clears throat> um, uh, he would spill things on the floor and never, literally never, clean them up. Uh, he got an ant infestation once um, and wasn't going to do anything about it because he said, he said, bugs are normal in British houses. I really like. Like, don't get me wrong. Out of all the bug infestations you can have, ants are definitely the least gross. Like, what's the alternative? Roaches? Oh, my God, it's disgusting. Mosquitoes? Oh, my God. Fruit flies? Ugh. God forbid bed bugs. Ants aren't that bad, and it's pretty easy to take care of them. Um, and it's pretty easy to keep ants out. Just you gotta make sure you never leave food and stuff out. And uh, like and you know, applying like the spray and stuff. And then they're just they'll stop showing up. It's not it, taking care of as someone who's had to deal with a lot of different types of bugs. <laughs> ants are easily like the least bad bug. 
bugs. Ever since I was a kid, I was really into like bugs and insects. When I was a, when I was really really small, there was a bunch of wood lice that used to live in our garden. Spoiler alert. If I ever get bed bugs again, I'm just gonna lay in traffic. I wouldn't want that shit. I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Also, the other good thing about ants is that they'll tell you exactly where they're coming from and where they're going. Oh yeah, I mean you can just watch the ant. And you will see where it's going to go and where they're coming from. So ants are relative to other bugs. The least bad bug. Uh, that and like the spiders that just eat other spiders. Not that bad. I, uh, fire ants are a different breed. We don't talk about fire ants. So that's sort of like the type of person that this guy is. There have been other people. This is the Nikki clip I was thinking of. Who've also talked about him biting them. Yeah. He keeps biting me. Yeah. I actually will, uh, will bite both me sometimes. What? And I get so many bruises all the time from him <laughs> biting me. I thought you were saying that you bite people. No, will bites me. Record. Yeah. What the fuck? Genuinely. And he issues a statement and he says, in the past week, a series of allegations have been made over my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. I want to emphasize, Jesus, emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my perspective, this person's feelings are completely valid and I've taken my time sharing this statement as I wanted to process and respond respectfully. During our relationship's final months, I became slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish. These actions caused a lot of pain to my ex-girlfriend, and I've since sought therapy to address these behaviors, making significant lifestyle changes to rectify my past actions. I've come to realize how much my past behavior hurt this person, and I truly, uh, but I truly compassionately believe I've made great strides from the person I once was. The allegation of abuse, particularly in the form of biting, shocked me. Throughout our relationship, I understood from our numerous conversations and text messages that this behavior was consensual, consensual, playful, and reciprocally enjoyed. I truly believe that those personal messages exchange, the personal message exchanges reflect mutual affection and understanding. Out of respect for her, I chose not to publish them. Sure, sure, out of respect for her. And I emphasize my perspective is not shared to diminish or invalidate anyone's feelings. Instead, I share it in the hope that I can offer a genuine, fair, and relevant insight into my understanding of the situation. While I may be, while I may perceive our interactions differently, I recognize that this person has processed and expressed feelings of hurt. I want to extend my sincerest apologies for any pain I caused. I'm fully committed to understanding and addressing your concerns going forward. I hope my perspective sheds light on the situation without detracting from the, its message. I'm dedicated to earning and maintaining the trust of those around me, and I continue to hope to continue to be held to these high standards. Literally, first of all, all of it, PR language, and and he doesn't even address the biggest problem. And as I don't even know what world I have to live in to say this, as Dream himself says, he doesn't mention her name. And Dude, you know how in, you know how bad your tweet has to be? You know how bad your fucking apology has to be? The dream fucking outshines you? Dream says, she said she withdrew consent using a safe word that you frequently would intentionally bite down harder afterward to the point that she would scream. Even isolated from everything else, that's clearly abuse. While reading this, I was waiting to see you talk about that issue, to say anything, only to finish reading and find out you didn't acknowledge it once. I really don't understand how you thought that this was accountability or an apology or even an informative statement. This did serve as confirmation that she was talking about you, which I'm glad to have. Wilbur, you did take accountability for being slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish, but it seems that those are the things that you acknowledge as past problems while overshadowing the physically abusive actions and claiming to be completely reformed now. You seem to truly think you did nothing abusive and this statement is built on that foundation. You are being dishonest with yourself or with us or both. You describe these actions as consensual without refuting her complete revocation of consent through your agreed upon safe word. A word set with the purpose of explicitly ending consent. She trusted you. She used this safe word as a boundary and you shattered that trust. Therapy won't help you if you seriously describe your abusive actions as playful, affectionate, and especially consensual. Your therapist can't read your mind and know you're being dishonest. She was afraid to say your name due to your dedicated audience, and this wasn't acknowledged either. As sometimes who's, someone who's sometimes shared an audience with you, this is really disappointing. 
She had reason to be afraid to say your name, but you shouldn't have been afraid to say hers. Shelby, I'm sorry you had to go through this. I'm sorry you felt scared about public support, and I hope this gives you some hope that the world is overall full of good people. I'm sorry that you will forever be affected by this as a victim of domestic abuse. I was scared to ever speak out in fear of not being taken seriously or believed. Incre it's incredibly encouraging to see so many people express support and uplift your story and message, and I believe this can help many future situations like yours. I'm sorry if any events involving me or my audience in the past contributed to your anxiousness about coming forward in this community, and I hope this serves as a reminder to everybody that at the end of the day, the community and the creators are united when it comes to the most important things. The truth, what's right and what's wrong, speaking for those who can't, uplifting the voices of those that might otherwise go unheard, standing up for what is right and speaking against those that do wrong. Your story will help. The story you told will help so many young people see signs of toxicity and abuse before it's too late for them. Thank you for being brave. And then there was like this clip that I also thought was like fucking insane. There was this one time that he pinned me down and asked me to try my absolute hardest to get him off of me. And I couldn't do it, obviously. And he said something to make the point that he was so much stronger than me that I wouldn't be able to fight him back. Fight back against what? What do you mean? You don't say shit like that to people? That's insane. Um, and I was also sexually assaulted by my first boyfriend, and he knew that. Um... There was this one time that he Swedish we have the term I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that it means like if you're part of the game you have to deal with the game I mean yeah like dude what the fuck I don't know how many people saw, watched uh cuties late night show yesterday I didn't because I'm a simp um but there's a scene where Will Neff was saying Women love to be like, if we were in a zombie apocalypse, you would let me bite you, right? Right? It just hypothetically, if we fought, you think I could win? No, I don't think so. No, but you think I could win? No. If you had to kill me, would you do it? Yeah. No, you couldn't do it. No. <laughs> And that is great. That is hilarious. Excellent relationship you've got right there. That's wonderful. Okay. Absolutely wonderful. Holding someone down and being like, ha ha, you can't do anything about this. That's just terrifying. That is just absolutely terrifying. Perilous, thank you, by the way, for the two gift subs. Thank you. And you know that it's terrifying because there is a reason that really big dudes, dudes that are like really tall or have a really large frame or both tend to be some of like the nicest, nicest, sweetest people. And they, they tend to do a lot of things to make themselves look less threatening because they're aware of the fact that their sheer existence can be kind of terrifying to other people. Like, this huge fucking dude walks up to you like, hey, it's like, <gasps> you dropped it. Like, oh, oh, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And it's because they're aware, like, I know that I might seem intimidating and that I don't, but I don't want people to be afraid of me because I'm not interested in hurting anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just a, a dude that exists. <clears throat> so yeah she came out about all this she eventually did release a statement um actually yesterday morning saying i thought a lot about what i would say when i came back first i want to say the biggest thank you to everyone who showed their support i've never felt so loved and cared for and i've never seen so many communities come together and have someone's back like this i'm proud of everyone taking such a powerful stance against these actions <clears throat> um while I didn't do this for myself, through sharing my story, I've healed more parts of myself I had no idea were still pained. I'd like to address the apology. Quite frankly, I've never seen an apology so self-centered. It seems like to purposefully, um, purposely misconstrue the issue I very clearly laid out. My issue was not with being bit. It was about being hurt and to vaguely apologize for any hurt while knowing we needed a safe word because I was being hurt so often by accident. I continue to be hurt daily is even disrespectful. 
but not more disrespectful than not even saying my name. I believe I'm referred to as ex-girlfriend. So if you don't know who he's talking about, you might not find out what he did. This is how you take, this is not how you take accountability. No, not only are there no DMs whatsoever where I expressed that I enjoy being hurt by my partner to imply that there was consent in text over an issue that happened entirely in person where every conversation about it happened in person is ridiculous. He knows how often I asked for him to stop hurting me. That I didn't like it and I didn't like being covered in bruises all the time. Entirely why he switched to biting my legs so no one would look and so no one would think I was abused, but he continued to hurt me. He didn't take he either didn't take my pleas for it to stop seriously or he didn't hear them at all. <clears throat> I felt so lost for so long, truly losing myself in this relationship. I, I abandoned my personal morals, neglected friends, and lied for this person. Every time I spoke uh, about being ignored, I shrank. I lost my fight. I stayed locked in a house I had no key for and didn't even try and leave anymore. People asked why we stay. And it's hard to explain ourselves because we've abandoned all our reasoning. I wasn't safe anymore with this person, but I couldn't see that. I loved him and he told me he'd stop trying to hurt me. I'm deeply saddened by how many more friends were hurt by his action, but I'm so thankful. Everyone doing the absolute most and making sure I've been okay for the past few days. Thank you for everyone who reached out to me. Thank you. Hashtag shovel support squad. Every day I read your messages, see your art, and it makes me feel like I'm the bravest girl in the world. I think... The good that comes out of victims sharing their experiences so others can learn and avoid similar pain or come to terms with the way that they were mistreated is the most important thing in the moment. You cannot treat people this way without consequences. You cannot pretend to know, pretend you don't know the harm you caused. You cannot pretend going to therapy fixes all those mistakes. All that, all of the love that's been shared for me over the past few days is for every victim of abuse. Our lives are forever changed by these experiences. I now struggle with memory problems and extreme anxiety, and it might be a while before I fully feel like myself, whoever she is. But I know I have my spark back. Please remember how brave and strong you are. We shouldn't be expected to be silent when we are mistreated. I can't believe he pulled a Predmeister and said, don't worry, guys, I've really been working on myself. Um. So. We cool? We cool or what? Ah. <sighs> Fucking insane, dude. Fucking insane.